To all CCS race fans around the world, this is race number two here in Wampum, Pennsylvania, Pocono Raceway, site of the second race of the season, round two of the championship. Last week at Daytona for the Jazz 500, it was Joy Payne's taking home a solid win and upsetting the Apple car in a Pontiac. She'll be starting third today. Joining me today at the booth, as always, is going to be Zach. Instead of his production, he'll be our co-commentator, Bradley Ream. Could not join us due to technical difficulties. We wish Ream the best. Zach, what an incredible Daytona race we had last week. To sum it up in a couple words, fantastic, epic finish, and we had fuel mileage. What are you expecting, though, today at Pocono after a great momentum to start the season? If we, I don't know. I really don't know how they, uh, how aggressive these guys are going to be, but if they're more on the mellow side, which I'm thinking they will do, uh, I think we're going to see a little bit more similar of racing. Of course, it's not a plate style track. We'll probably see a little, this will probably come down to who has the better pit stop if we end up doing pit stops, but I think we might. So, um, if they, if we don't really come down to who can get the better runs on the top, cause that's, that has shown over the test runs I've done that that is the top, that is the quicker lane to do passing on. Yeah, for sure, Zach. And it should be one of those races where we could see a dynamic with three different turns, which we'll talk about more of the track later. But first, let's swing it back to Zach with some pre race headlines. All right. Point number one what numbers? Pontiac only has three cars, yet have won the first race with the biggest one of the season being the Jazz 500. Uh, a story to watch is can they steal another crown jewel or somehow keep the pace up for the menu crown? We'll find out. Then point number two, Pennsylvania Palace. Pocono is arguably the most interesting crown jewel on the schedule. Two and a half mile triangular track with uh, been known to be a strategy track position fest. So see how that goes. But with an added incentive, we will see how more aggressive these guys race today. Then point number three, painting the picture. Joy Paints made a big statement on that um, off the track and on and off the track in the number 77 Pontiac, uh, Pontiac uh, Funyuns car last week at Daytona. She did a rear comeback on this Crown Jewel event. Double, double to start the season. Uh, we'll see if she fin- finds the uh, burst trip again today. And point number four, Evan is him. Evan H. is looking strong. His quest for another championship ring. We'll find out if he can sweep the spot today and keep the big moving rolling onto the Pocono Mountains. Going to be a fun one today for you. Let's send it back over to you for the call of the race. Thank you, Zach, for those headlines. As always, guys, Pocono is a three-turn racetrack. Banking is usually around 14 degrees up top. Turn one, turn two, and through three are different. Turn two is obviously a tele-turn, mild over Indianapolis. Milwaukee's turn three and Trenton Speedway, a New Jersey track, uh, is turn one mild. On the pole is Fireball 48. He had an interesting run at Daytona. He was cycling to the front. We'll see what he can do. And joining him alongside the front row is Reggie Fogelman. Reggie Fogelman, as always, it could be one of those flashy drivers, you could say, in both series and up in the commentating booth, as we have seen. And our row two, we talked about Joy Paints last week's winner. Quickly on Joy Paints, we're going to go double. Be crazy for Pontiac. Would be a good momentum. And that's all we're going to cover here real quick. Zach, give us a little top five in points rundown. I want to really focus on that, even though it was the same results and who you're watching today at Pocono. Wants to watch. Yeah. So, uh, of course, the top uh, two guys in standings being t- two Pontiacs, Joy Paints and 77 with that win last week, of course. The Cazzo, um, despite not finishing well, he did lead a few laps, and that does solidify him second in standings coming in here into Pocono. Defending champion Evan H., uh, finished very well last week at Daytona. He is currently Drivers, third in standings, keeping some consistency from last engines. season. And then fourth in standings is not a weave in the 48. Was leading on the last lap, lost a couple spots, didn't seal the deal. So we're seeing the cars roll off now. And then fifth in standings, Dark X Rain was able to sneak in that position. As uh, We're going to go ahead and get this race geared up to go. Thank you, Zach, for those top five and headlines. And that's everything we're catching you guys, the fans up. It's Pocono Raceway, ladies and gentlemen. The Tricky Triangle, Tricky the Fox is not here on the track, but he will be here in spirit as these guys navigate a different type of setup we'll talk about compared to Daytona, which is more super speedway heavy. As the pace car makes that hard left turn, as they enter the Geico restart zone, it's going to be Ascar Fireball 48 leading us to green at Pocono. You see they're starting to fan out three wide, the typical Pocono lanes here. Sometimes four or five, you can fit up to eight wide. But great run by Fireball and Paints to secure that one-two right now as Reggie Fogelman gets a nice run off the top. 
Over to Zach. Down the back. Yeah, it looks like Reggie Fogelman was able to secure third, wasn't able to get that uh, position from the seven, wasn't able to keep a uh, position that he had in front of the 77. Oh, three goes in three wide there. Uh, doesn't quite stick as the top line is shown to have the better run off the corner. Yeah, you can definitely see that. We're going to start seeing ebbs and flows. I see John O'Brien's look for third there with terms of the lanes. The tunnel turn usually is preferred the higher side, whereas usually turn one, you want to be somewhere in the middle. Turn three, right underneath the grip patch. As they go lap one, let's talk a little bit about the setup here. Zach, last week we saw at the Super Speedway with the rear diffuser, the leader was a sitting duck. Here at Pocono, what would you do as a crew chief? What would you prefer? Would you prefer straightaway speed raw? Especially knowing turn three is probably the most important turn in this track to get to the finish line. Or do you see, oh, we got a wreck? Might have an accident, a little smoke up ahead. Let's, let's uh, looks pause like it. the 59 may have an issue. Let's we'll see, we are on our first caution here. We do have manual. Uh, yep, I'm going to go ahead and throw it. And we'll talk about setups in a little bit. We'll have to check on the replay. What happened to Evan H? It looks like that was our fan champion here. Great run at Daytona. Yep, that's Thresher. Here we go. Let's see what happened to Barney Thresher the third. So it looked like it happened in the tunnel turn. Um, we've seen uh, Shangul, Evan H, so kind of just look here and find out from that. Over oh, three wide in front of that with Gunther and Dark Rain. Dark X Rain. Yeah, this is the first time reviewing it, just like you fans here. Pocono can be a little bit interesting with the with the wall ride. Sometimes you do hit the wall of this tunnel. Three wide. Uh, this yeah. Oh, wow. Sammy. Yeah. Sammy. Looked like uh, he might have got clipped from behind. Yeah, he got put in the box, no intended, right there underneath the yellow. Yep. Uh, looks like Freeman Jr. had a little hope there. Give him a little hope there. Picked here's probably our best bet. So we're going to go slow mo. Ooh, hard hit into the wall. Oh, wow. Oh, air. Wow. Yeah, air time for the 60, 59 hard in, then. These guys figured it out, so. And then the 59. The right wall there, ride. So. Yep, he's off the wall now. Yeah, so, man, that was a hard hit for the 60. I want to take an onboard look at that. Take an onboard look with Cody Forge here. And that 60 Ford Mustang. And that was a nasty, nasty hit. Do roof. Let's do a roof camera here. Here we go. On board with Cody Forge, Gold Peak T, number 60 Mustang. Man, no leg. Yeah, next gen car is with the wing. They're a little bit stiffer in the front, so he'll definitely feel that tomorrow. But we'll be all okay. There's a rear chase cam with Cody Forge, Gold Peak T, Mustang, number 60. See Sammy in the box, get in a box right there, turn, and Cody Forge gets a little air time and lands yeah, on all fours. Yeah, yeah, really just what it looked like there is that Rookie Freeman Jr. just pressed the envelope there on the first lap. You don't want to do that. So under yellow now, we got green flag pit stops, looks like. Okay. Make sure, I think the leader coming to this was the nine of yep, Fireball. Fireball. He is yep. out. We did have a few guys stay out, looks like, but out of the race is the 11 and the 16, quite Potentially the 59, 23 is also out. So we had a lot of people stay out. Who's the leader now? Might be... Joy Paints. Paints, oh boy. Now, uh, we, Zach, uh, before Zach and I came on here, we didn't think Pit Stops would be a player today. It was kind Looks of borderline, like... but with this being a Crown Jewel event, we didn't talk about that in the previous. This is a Crown Jewel. This is the York Peppermint Patty 200. Pocono is probably the most interesting Crown Jewel out of all of them. Definitely Watkins Glen as well for the Zach Willis 3 TB 400. We'll get to that later in the season. But with this race, Zach, before we kind of got cut off with the caution, I was going to ask a question. What do you think these crew chiefs have in mind, especially with these early pit stops? Do we start seeing maybe Joy Paints, for example, say, you know what? It's not about the turns today with the handling. Let's talk about the straightaway speed. Or do you say someone like Jonah Burge, maybe in third, or in Fireball, who won the pole, who maybe just said, you know what? Let's pit, make a couple adjustments, and let's try to get the, the right balance. It's impossible to get all three turns of Pocono right. But what would you do as a crew chief? Would you sacrifice a little sp a speedway, a little straightaway speed for some corner handling, especially during the tunnel turn? Or are you a kind of guy that says, you know what, straightaway speed matters here, considering this is the longest backstretch in all of NASCAR? Well, before that yellow, which was 
very entirely unexpected. I, personally, I would have made the call to stay out till about halfway and then pit then, anticipating this race going to green, but that did not happen. So, uh, really, I was just maybe these guys who pitted may have might have a better idea. Uh, if we stay green from here, these, these guys up front are definitely at a disadvantage as uh, those guys who did pit, which I do believe starts off NASCAR Fireball 48, but we'll see how passing and stuff goes with pace and whatnot. Uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. We have a very split field when it comes to fuel strategy. There is no damaged cars as all of them have exited the race. Uh, the 10, I'm sure... Uh, is also in the back with a bad pit stop. I'm sure he might have had some front end damage, had to repair that, but it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this strategy all plays out. Take like a little top 10 rundown, and we are going to go back to green this lap as the accident has been cleared. Joy Paints is your leader in first. Reggie Fogelman will be in second place. Third, third will be Jonah Burridge. Fourth is the 99 of Eli Wolf. Fifth is the Gaming Freak. Dripsy in sixth. Uh, is that Reem in seventh? Yes. I believe NH in. Eighth, ninth, help me with that one, Zach. Bobby Isaac. Bobby Isaac, that's right. And the 21, help me with that one, too, just so I Roberto know Roberto Crown Jr. Roberto Crown Jr., okay. And then, like I said, guys, this is only my second event. Still getting used to the names, but as the season goes on, I'll definitely start to memorize, even though I won't be in the booth full time. Mm -hmm. Just better memorize. Anyway, that's all TV stuff. We're getting all that cleared up. Interesting restart here, Zach. Pocono is usually known to have a good inside restart with good draft, but with Pocono being more of a downhill turn three do you think the outside line has a shot today what are your thoughts uh well i i, I think the outside line definitely has a shot but it would the, the 77 would have to make a mistake or maybe the five would really have to execute here uh really depend on who gets the better start that would decide who gets the lead after this also yeah, interesting very... thing to add uh that was the first wreck of the season uh, just right one reason yeah, that's right. Only Daniel Paulus Jr. had a little incident there with some mechanical failure at Daytona. Anyway, Pace Car is going to make that left hard, hard left turn into the pit lane here as we go into the restart zone. Once again, it's Joy Pace leading us back to green here on lap six. As you see, they start fanning out three wide. Really good run off the top by Reggie Fogelman as Jonah Birds looks to peak three wide. Is that too low, though? Yep. Pace is going to get the run up top. Reggie Fogelman, though, clears. Yeah, Fogelman, he has uh, undoubtedly the most consistent rookie last year. Top five week after week. Uh, still without a win. He's led a lot of laps, but has yet to win a race. Uh, him being up front today just proves that he's really good in the series. Yeah, real quick, Zad, not to cut you off there, but I don't think I did, but Eli the Wolf, you just saw a tur tur the tunnel turn, turn two. You hit that yellow line or below it, you're going to lose about 10, 15 miles per hour. It's something to watch on these restarts. If we do get indeed get another one, he's trying to make his way back. He does clear for fourth over an H. Now, Reggie Fulgham at the front here, as you see them fan now, three, four, almost five wide back there. It's definitely yeah. dicing up. Really, really, really shaking up back there. Here's Joyko on the 51. 2021 uh, NCCRS champions are three wide in turn one, man. Yeah, Pocono is known to have insane, sometimes diabolical restarts. We'll have to watch that. We do indeed get a... Uh, we have green-white checkers on today, Zach, or are we not going to do that today? I'm turned off, but same system. If we have a costume two to go, it's it, it's going yeah, to be over. If if there's something two to go that doesn't warrant... that wouldn't warrant a crash, it would be different, but uh, I don't want to risk crashing the game, so uh, we're just going to do the same system we did to just uh, make sure that two to go... Uh, whatever flag, if there's a yellow after two to go, race is over, pretty much. Yeah, and that that's that's the right system. Is there? Wow, they're really going realistic here. Four Y. Oh, Chef Squid. Oh, oh, Gaming Freak. Oh, Gaming oh. Freak just took a shot. I hope he's all right. Oh my goodness, he's up on his lid. That's a caution. Isaac Whoa. involved. Yeah, that's it for the Gaming Freak. I have not seen a wreck that bad in a long time. Gosh. Just typical 4Y. It was very realistic 4Y. You see the gaming freaking eyes are just going to Constantine up, and they're just going to, oh, my goodness, into the catch fence. Doesn't hit nobody. Kazel oh, might have got a little, a little there, bit, but, yeah. but doesn't hit nobody, thankfully, and no one hits him. But, and Bobby, man, tough, tough work for those two Wait, dodge cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to his onboard. Man, are we going to flip 
just second work in the season as a flip. Full speed here. Yeah, Bobby's just minding his own business. David Freak goes up and watch this hit. <laughs> That's some gnarly air right there. Yeah, that was, yeah, he must have caught, caught the wall a bad way and definitely had a bad way. That's definitely I mean, competition with how bad uh, Cash Pro Ball 48 Swift was in 2021 in the Rainbow Race. There's the rear chase. Yeah, he just gets in the air. He's a game of freak. A little hit from Kazo on yeah, his not, side. Not huge, but it was there for sure. But uh, I think that's Bobby's race. Um, really, the 91, made, yeah, someone sent it in for a log there. Yeah, that Chef 26 Squid. Garth Salamander, he uh, DQ last week. Chef Squid also didn't finish last week. Uh, oh, we, you know what, Chef Squid? We'll get that replay. He did force the issue with a little side draft and try to cook be up aggressive, but over aggressive for sure. Then, so I, I, I wouldn't surprise me if we did see some more pit stops, but uh, it doesn't look like we have seen them. Let's see here on a chase they cam. Been, they would have been the last time by for nope. sure. So these guys stay out. Very interesting move. Do they immediately think we're going to see more yellows? Well, you know what, Zach? This is interesting. A lot of people, a lot of fans even thought Daytona would be the wreck fest. Today it's Pocono that's the wreck fest. And yeah, two wrecks, it, nine laps in. Yikes. Well, ten now. Uh, but one thing to note here, Joy Paints is going to have the outside lane. We saw Reggie Fogelman had the outside lane. He took the lead on that restart. That's something to watch. Yeah, that's Let's definitely an interesting passing area, but uh, Fireball 48, he gained quite a few spots there, so tires definitely make a difference, even with just a few laps. Let's have Zach do a little top 10 rundown as we have some new faces in the top 10. Yeah, Reggie Fogelman uh, consistently in the top 10. I'm going to go ahead and get to where we go green this, this time by. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. I don't know if that did it. Okay, yeah, that, uh, yeah Reggie Fogelman, he's in first. Uh, got that move in the last restart. Joy Paints, last week's winner. Uh, Sean can some, some consistency. Dripsy has snuck himself into the third place position. Eli the Wolf still holding holding in the top five. And then NH in fifth. Make a lot of noise last week, but today seems to be the opposite. Daniel Pauls Jr. Uh, didn't finish so great last week. Finished two laps down, but currently six today. And then Jonah Burge, only triple digit car in the field. Teammate to the 22, running seventh. Um, yeah, this, this could be a good finish for him if he is able to stay in the top ten. And then uh, eighth is rookie Crazy BGD, currently reading rookie standings. Uh, if he finishes where he's at right now, he'll continue to lead rookie standings, being the highest running rookie. Then in tenth place is Brummer Sports, number six, Abigail Lane. That's a top ten rundown brought to you by Zach right there. Reggie Fogelman, the restart games are going to start to be played out right here, Zach. This is Reggie Fogelman's chance to lead it for the first time today in a restart zone. Does he go a little early? We'll watch that and see if any wheel spin occurs. Does he get a little push from Dripsy? Sometimes row two. Not much, but it does help at Pokemon to have a good push. Let's see if Eli the Wolf or Dripsy actually contribute to Paints and Fulgham again in the lead. But it's that pace car for the third time today, making that hard left turn. As they enter the Geico restart zone, it's going to be Reggie Fulgham and Joy Paints on the front row as we're back to Green Flag Racing here at the Tricky Triangle. It looks like the fives will be a good start there. Much more even as they go three wide back there in the back. And three wide at the front. It's going to be NH. Now does Fogelman. He's going to stay even. But Paint should have to run up top with this draft coming. Yep. Now Paint clears. Eli the Wolf looking for second. And he will. There's Daniel Paulus Jr. We talked about him earlier. Tough Daytona. Had a mechanical issue. Looking to get those gremlins. Someone's on the apron. They back That's off. Pretty. Yeah, again, rookie, he's looking for every spot he can get. And as a rookie, man, you just don't know what you don't know, so it's definitely about sending it as, oh, they're almost in the grass. Actually, it might be touching the grass. That's interesting. I haven't seen that all race. It'll yeah. be something to watch Jonah, as the run goes on. Yeah, Jonah Burr's in the 121. He lost a few spots there on that restart. Got to be careful. We don't want to go four wide. We saw four wide. Oh, three wide. Looks pretty clean, though. They're, they're going to be okay. There's yeah, Chef Squid. Amazing. Yeah. been... Caught the, the causing factor of that last wreck. Looks like he has a little bit of rear end damage. Uh, might, might be a perspective thing. But. Yeah, Chef Squid's been in the middle of the Calamari Ocean today. Hopefully he doesn't get fried at the end of this race. But back at the front, it's Joy Paints. We're going to go back to back with that Pontiac. 
What can you say about Joy Pace? Looks like the crew chief has said, you know what, we learned what we learned at Daytona with the Super Speedway package, even though it's different, and used that straightaway speed because it seems like she's not the best in the corners, but during the straights, she'll start pulling right here, even with the drag. Let's see Eli the Wolf. Let's go on a Spyro Cam. You know, let's do it. Let's go Spyro Cam, Joy Eli Pace style. Oh, yeah, let's go Joy Pace. Let's Spyro style it up. All right, Joy, Joy, got turn one, 99 with you, a little break. 99's going to run a little lower in one. I, I tend to see him a little bit higher in two. He's going to get a straighter line, exit down the back. They're all tucked single file from the first 20. First 20 single file. No one's making a move. Watch him go a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Paulus is getting battled with third back there with the five. 99's going to go a little higher, sniff a little draft. Watch in three. Block the air, block the air in a three. He's going to go a little lower near the grass. Exit velocity point, point seven, point seven. Block it, block it. Push him with arrow, watch high. Use the right lane, use the right lane with the strip. There you go. There you go. Clear, 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 clear to the line. Lead this lap. All right, that's a lap right there around Pocono. And one thing I noticed here is that Pocono with the spotter is all about line movement. Understand where to place your car. Daytona was about blocking, blocking the air. It's all about line placement here. As you see, Eli the Wolf tried to touch the rear end and join pace there with the diffuser. Go a little bit deeper on the brakes, but loses a little bit of time on exit, which is important. Back to you. Yeah, I noticed that uh, uh, you noticed Reggie Fogelman is trying to low lane on that uh, 22 car the past few laps and losing every little bit of gain he gets and every time he tries that. that and that just goes to make sure that, that the top lane is definitely a quicker lane on pace. And uh, currently we're in fourth, but uh, he's going to he's really showing that he's got a little bit faster car than these guys and he wants to get back up there. Yeah, it was like Joy Paints. It. Man, you know what? It's kind of crazy. I'm not going to say they've kind of learned their lesson, but now things are starting to really... I don't know. I think they're starting to single out, Zach. I don't think we're talking about pit stops or anything like that, but when they single out like that, you know something's about to happen in terms of maybe strategy behind the scenes or people are starting to work together mm -hmm. differently. But Joy yeah. Paints is starting to control a good pace. The lap times are pretty much not falling off. Maybe a two tenths. So there's no tire fall off, and everyone's starting to single file out Pocono, which is normal around here. Yeah, they're just trying to file out, get, get these laps counted. 40 laps, a little bit longer, especially for Pocono, but um, these guys are getting it figured out. Uh, again, Crown Jewel event, too. So, uh, again, really, these guys are figuring, figuring it out, maybe seeing what lane works, what doesn't. Oh, is Eli Wolf trying to go for a lead in turn one? Let's see. Let's, let's, let's look at Eli the Wolf here. Does he use a little side draft? But does he go too low and Pace gets thrown up top? Yeah, it looks like Pace is going to get the run. Yeah, you see. It's good to know at the end of the race right there, Zach. Towards the exit, kind of like the center between turn one and into the wall pond, a little transition. Pace seems to have a really good uh, line management, which I think would be very crucial at the end of the race. It's knowing how to block the airlines, which we have seen with this next-gen car, especially with the wing. A lot of the downforce is underneath the car, and if you can understand aero blockage underneath the car, you can definitely start to push up and get yourself a better chance to win. But let's go through the field a little bit. Obviously, we saw Joy Paints, Eli the Wolf, and Daniel Paulus Jr. Fogelman. We've hired. How about Dripsy? Let's go back to Dripsy in fifth, and that's Skittles 54 Chevy, I believe. Uh, we haven't seen him all. I mean, we saw him a little bit at Daytona. We haven't seen him much. He's definitely the most colorful scheme out here. I think for some like Dripsy today, solid top five, bring her home. Get a good result, build some momentum, because that's what you want to do. Especially with the schedule going to be a little bit different, a little erratic with Super Speedways coming up. Good run for him. Bradley Ream, we saw Bradley Ream do really good last week at Daytona. Hadn't got a top five, he checked it off. We're going to get back-to-back -back top five. He's starting yeah, he's, the season well, for sure. Yeah, he's uh, one spot short of getting a back-to-back -back top five. Definitely, this has definitely put um, last season in the rearview mirror just with that finish last week. Uh, what about Gar Salamander, Zach? Got anything on him? Uh, he, again, DQ'd last week due to uh, pace issues, but uh, he's he's been definitely a dark horse. Uh, gets a win here and there, but uh, this will if he finishes here, he'll definitely help him in standings. As currently, as of right now, he is dead last in standings with that DQ last week. So this will definitely help him out. Net being early in the season, it's a good time to go down. Yeah, sometimes being last early in the season does not matter. It's it's a long season. There is playoffs, and Zach will talk about playoffs when we get to, like, race 12. Right now, it's not about playoffs. It's about winning a crown jewel event here at Pocono. As Paulus gets a nice run, William Fogelman looking for a challenge, and Dripsy will get on his outside. 
And the last two people to note, Nelson in the uh, in eighth. Not bad for him. He's seventh in points. In oh, the Reds below three. Camaro. Yeah, he's just he's just looking like I said for another solid top ten. Build up those points, points stack a little bit, and make his run as the season goes on. Yeah, Nelson in the O three and eight in eighteenth of uh, actual three cars. Austin Johns in three is Fogelman. Looks like he got around. Yeah, Drippy got around Fogelman. It looks like uh, the twenty eight trying to challenge him as well. Oh, I apologize. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sometimes the zero three three can get a little confusing. But Reggie Fogelman is starting to lose a little momentum, and that just shows you how line line placement and well, blocked there by Salamander, but it just shows you how line placement, one wrong uh, line move where you just place your car in the wrong spot at Pocono, like right, right below that line in the tunnel turn, you lose momentum. And Austin Johns takes advantage, just uses the high side off that exit move. Now, back at the front, though, it's starting to be a little bit of separation. Is that with that Reggie Fogelman move, what it's done is it's starting to do a little breakaway, similar to what you see at a, uh, a Michigan-type race. Now, we're starting to see a little bit of characteristics of a Michigan-type race where you see the first four or five break out to about a second, but the, the top two have seemed to have the strongest car. What is your assessment halfway through this race? Yeah, I mean, also keep in mind, we're about halfway next time by, but keep in mind that uh, there are some guys that pitted uh, Cougar and Pulsitter, and these guys have yet to pit. Um, they may have enough fuel to make it to the end based on those caution laps, but um, they don't have near as fresh tires as those guys in the back, but um, not seen them yet, and I think track position may count a little bit more, but it'll definitely be something to keep in mind if that does become an issue uh, when we get to five laps to go or something like that. Yeah, Joey Paints right now is still bleeding, and I think you make a good point, Zach. If we do have a little fuel mileage, which we saw at Daytona, remember those guys like Fireball took the pit road strategy under that first caution. As you can see, everyone now is really starting to get their groove, get that long run pace and see who's got the best times. As Paints is now starting to fall off, Zach, a little bit, about four-tenths of a second. There is real tire wear. That's why line placement matters and understanding where your spotter is on the, the, car, the car in second you needs to do a thing a little bit different compared to what you're doing in first. If I'm Eli the Wolf right here, you studied, you've been the rabbit behind Joy Paints for the last 20 laps. you got to start thinking, do I go a little lower in a tunnel turn? Does it work? No. Is that car a little weaker in a tunnel turn, but maybe Paints has a little bit better run on three? I think Eli the Wolf's best shot is turn three. He seems to be a little stronger. Just because he gets no, he just gets a little bit clean air on the nose on that uh, that left side, and he just gets a better run with the draft. Paints has no one in front. That's probably his best shot. He needs a little help. But Paulus might look here, but he stays in line. What, what's your assessment there? I if you're the rapid versus the leader at Pocono. Well, Eli, uh, de he's definitely got a little bit of a um, head over a few of these rookies. He ran about seven races last season, got a second place finish at uh, Daytona last year in number 19. But uh, today, he's, he, you know, Trackhouse has shown to be, uh, it's, it's fresh in the Cup Series. They're strong in the NCCRS. And uh, now they're running second in the Cup Series. Eli, he's been pretty, uh, he started fourth. He's definitely shown he's quick. Um, I wonder really how he'll execute with this 77 car who's been in the series for uh, quite a while. So we'll definitely see how uh, these top four really manage it out really. Let's go on board with Eli the Wolf from a, behind, like a, a front cam behind Joy Paints' rear end. Let's see, yeah. Let's see what, let's see where they're getting top. Now we're seeing about 215, 211 now. You see a little bit, he's going to start to do a great move by Paints. Paints probably told the spotter, you know what, he's going a little bit lower than one. Let's block that run. Pretty equal, yeah, pretty equal on the trap, you know that? Real equal in terms of straightaway speed. They get pretty good off of one. And you see a little bit coming back. Paints is coming back a little bit. You got the wolf a little bit better on the brakes. But Paints goes a little bit early on entry, which helps her exit off of two. Now you see, once again, pretty equal on the straights. Entry is really good for Eli, but Paints goes a little lower to block it. It just creates that dirty wake behind, and then there's nothing you can do for Eli the wolf unless you got draft. Definitely, is that go back to the front camp, back to the TV here, TV one. I think Eli the Wolf is really going early on the brakes in the one, as you see him move for third there with Dripsy. Let's see if he can pull that off. But Paints is really saying, you know what? Screw the entry. Let's get it on exit. And that's probably the smarter move if you're the leader. You don't want to go too early on entry because it gives them a little bit of help. Now let's watch if there's a crossover here with Paulus. He's going to get the top side run, but I think he backs off his rain books for fourth. In there. Yeah, try to go low, but doesn't get the run. And he is uh, back in fifth, by the way. 
Yeah, Reem once again. What we talked about him just looking to get that top five once again. And that's important for Reem to build some momentum after a tough 2022. I think uh, Reem and Joy Pants are only two right now that were top five at Daytona and top five right now. Strong runs for these guys and gals here. Paints, like I said, looking to go for the back-to-back -back crown jewel event. Zach, we, we have, do we have a stat? Has anyone ever won back-to-back -back crown jewels to start of the season? Um, let alone crown jewel, or let alone back-to-back -back wins specifically, it has never happened. There has never been anyone winning back-to-back -back at the beginning of the season or back-to-back -back crown jewel events um, in this series. Uh, but Garcelometer Incorporated uh, does have a history. Last season, Kaza won two races in a row. Not crown jewel events, but he was the first driver to do it in this series history. Um, and then not too long after that, Rich Crown Jr. did the same, but um, Kaza, uh, or same, same same equipment, and he's currently second in standing. He's not running too well today. He's a little bit far back, has some work to do, but uh, we've seen some uh, consistency, random consistency, I guess you could say, with these Pontiacs, but this year, starting off, looks like they got it figured out. Yeah, they definitely got the right step, and this is a wing, right? It's a wing next-gen car, which means usually if it's a regular next-gen car, it's a spoiler. The wing has different effects on these cars, especially with dirty air meaning more. So being the leader, especially in a place like Pocono, definitely makes a difference. And Eli the Wolf is drips. He sends in the three, but he's going to lose all the momentum. I think, Eli the, yeah, I think Eli the Wolf here, Zach, he's really got to start thinking about, you know what, maybe changing it up because his entry points are great. But the problem is in the three and four, he's not, or excuse me, the three and four, just in the three, he's not getting the run like he's supposed to. And I think Joy Payne is doing a great job blocking that air. Understand that line management does matter here. Ooh, wow, these guys are starting to get antsy. Yeah, well, three wide back there. It's uh, who is that back there? Salamander. He's been in the thick of it today. That crazy BGD. BGD is yeah. a big gap there between the three and the uh, uh, the five. We do have a nice gap here. I believe that's Fogelman and Johns. Now, if you're in the top five, well, Reem says no, no. Let's try to make a move here, but that should not work into the tunnel term. This would be a good run for Johns. He'll get the run, I think. No, actually, Johns went with them, and he did not get the run like I thought, and that's going to help Reggie got the run. And now, yeah, stuff's going to help Reggie catch up. Paulus ran third right now after that uh, mishap last week. Yeah, well, like I said, this Pocono race, to, to the fan, it may look boring as Dripsy's definitely falling back after one wrong move. But to he us in the commentating the booth, it's actually interesting because we do have a lot of strategy in terms of on the track, normally it's in the pit road, but on the track, you can definitely play with your lines a little bit. You can play with aero wash. You can adjust settings in the car, too. It's Dripsy definitely is starting to... Yeah, he's... Oh, wow, he might... I yeah, think he's just the slow. Spots. Yeah, like on the bottom, there's no momentum down there. and That looks like he's going to be able to defend this position right here, but uh, he lost quite a few spots doing that. Yeah, let's look, just look at the leaders here. It looks like the... I think Reggie Fogelman's all but there now. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's all, just he's behind all but the three. There. He's just behind that three car. Austin yeah, Johns. Man, this is, this is, this is hard. If you're, if you're really Joy Page, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You like the Wolf can't generate a run. And, it, and honestly, that I don't think he can generate a run in the tunnel turn. He has to strike in turn three with help. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, he's got a Ford behind him. I doubt help would happen. And yeah. Reem just lost a little pace. He went too low in the one. See, it's very line sensitive here today. With the tires wearing and aging, as now we are hitting. Yeah, we're definitely starting to hit half a second, almost seven tenths fall off on certain tr uh, cars. Excuse me. I those cars that pitted, though. That's my question. Now, they're, nope. they're still losing a ton of time, too. And actually, Fireball lost a lot of spots there, so. Pitting early in this race was definitely a bad call as uh, what uh, he thought it would be. Now, then again, these guys might not have enough fuel, but with those caution laps, yep. it's going to be close. I think with the caution laps, that's going to save Paints, Wolf, he might Paul, Reem. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think today was just a, uh, an old case of track position is king, and you don't mm -hmm. want to give it up because it's impossible to pass around Pocono, especially with being line sensitive and dirty air mattering. Let's go with one last uh, spider camp today, and then we'll uh, just see uh, Zach do a little. Yeah, I was just checking the guys in the back. Looks like 44 is a little bit off pace. but Let's just check the 44 lead for Moro here. How off pace is he? He's yeah, about two if seconds he can, if off. If he can get up to 180 in the, in the straight. 
Ooh. We're gonna catch him. Yeah, they're gonna catch him, but let's see, let's see. One ninety-one. What is Paints doing in the wall? Let's find out. Yeah, well, he's twenty more. Twenty coming more. in. He's one ninety-one coming in. She's. We don't know. Try it again. Try it again. Let's go in a tunnel okay. turn. So forty-four going. One eighty-eight. Paints is going. Oh boy. Two oh six. Yeah, wow, that's quick, man. Yeah, Paints man, is definitely look like he's. Ah, man. I don't know. I think for safety's sake, we're gonna have to pull him out because the the problem yeah. is the, the closing right here at Pocono, especially with this being a line sensitive track. We don't want the leaders to lose it off a of line sensitivity. I think it's the smart thing to do. Yeah. Then uh, there was another car that was not run too well, and that was the 18 Bird. But he... uh, they won't catch Bird. They will not catch Bird. He's good. Yeah, I think he's good. We'll let him slide. He's like, he's only one. nine laps to go. Yeah, he's in yeah, yeah. a three and a one. He'll be good to go. 23. Remember, Pocono, we're, we're talking 50 second lap times here. Uh, it's a long way around this track. And if he does catch up, it probably with two to go. And it probably would be out in front enough where it wouldn't affect the leaders. Yeah. Back to the front, though. It's Joy Paints. You see the 44 Lethal Mortars Day will come to he's a mournful back. rest as uh, he will. Pull into the pits right here. Yep, he does, and that'll be his end. Today. Tough break for Lethal Mortal, who'll be credited with 37th. As that yeah. goes back to the camera here. It's back to the front. Eli the Wolf, Joy Paints, Daniel Paul is Bradley Ream. He moved up the fourth from Dripsy, and Austin Johnson is the only new in the top five. Zach, three four to this race. We know we might have a, a fuel concern, but probably not considering. Well, this caution lap saved us. What is, what is your thoughts so far, man? Man, really, it's just a bummer these guys can't pass like they'd want to. I'm sure they, they really try, but man, just getting to that top lane, these guys are so reluctant, and it's just, they might, it, it might just let that 77 come off the win as she gets a really good run off the corner there. Oh my god, what a run. And, that, and that's just, once again, building the, the, rep the rapport with your spotter, knowing where the 99's weak. Burge back there, he, uh, yeah, I think oh, not uh, might also be safe to say that 77 just might be playing quicker than these guys and every time they try to make a move she she executes well and, and you got to give credit like I said when you win Daytona you have momentum and when you have momentum you have a, a certain advantage a certain swagger entering another crown jewel event where you know how to win a big race and to do it back to back is hard let alone any races <laughs> but to do it back to back in the biggest stages shows you can be a championship contender at the end of the year Bradley Ream going for third but unfortunately for Bradley Reed, the tunnel turn is not where you want to make the move and will probably lose fourth place. He's still in the top five, though, if he loses it, I think. Oh, uh, no, jo yeah. John. Well, see, Austin Johns went with him, and that's the thing. Bradley Reed baited him to go low, and that's uh, a good move by Reed to keep it. Now, Fogelman's back there, but I don't. I think you're right. I think Payne just has the pace. Even if yeah. they have help, I just don't know if they can get around her straight away. When she got up. that run, when she got that run, it took them a battle lap to get, get the draft back right up to her. And they're still not quite there yet. And this race is flying by six to go. Even with almost eight tenths of a second fall off on tires, I think it's just even worse. It feels like the first five laps is your only chance to make a move. You like the Wolf's gonna have a good run here, but where's he gonna go with it? He knows the tunnel turns weak in, in the inside lane, and turn three, you gotta be at least a half a lane ahead. And he's just gonna have to play sit, sit and duck right here for sure. Through the tunnel turn, lap 35 out of 40. It's Eli the Wolf going to make the move? I don't think we've seen anyone try it here in turn three, but I still he don't hit think the it's grass. He hit the grass. He hit the grass, yeah. It's just, I, that he, raises the question, does anyone behind him get a run? Yeah, Paul's going to have a run, but I, I, I don't Where's think he's going to make it. Reem will take it. Yeah, Reem's going to take it, but that might not go in his favor. And he's going to go back in line. He's got to hop yeah. in. Yeah, just like yeah, a bunny, he has to hop back in line. Joy Paints is doing a masterful painting the brush here. <laughs> like, similar to Daytona, made her move late to win the race. Well, today it's just been a master class by her 77 Pontiac O'Reilly uh, Pontiac. And it's funny, I just mentioned one in the Funnings car, wins in an O'Reilly car would be something. Back-to-back -back crown jewels with different paint schemes is almost rare. It's almost one in a million, for sure. Yep, certainly. That will be a first time, for sure. Back-to-back -back in different paint schemes. But Eli the Wolf's not giving up. It's saying over yet. He needs to figure out how to make a run. We're going to come to four to go. 
if I'm Eli the Wolf now, Zach, what's your thoughts here? Considering you know you haven't had anything, you've got no help, you know Paulus really isn't going to give you with the different manufacturer lines. What do you do? Is there any possible way around paint, or is she just too fast today? Man, I, it's hard to say. Yeah, maybe just throw in the kit, throw the kitchen sink at it. Really, is my best guess. You get the draft up, do what you can. It looks like we do have. Oh, we have, we're gonna have to throw a yellow. Uh, I, I can't. It's too late in the race. Uh, that would end the race. Now we cannot do that. Who yes. was that? Uh, looks like 18, 6, 66 maybe. Let's just check it real quick. Yeah, it looks like all them guys are out the way. Uh, now they're out of the 50, way. We can't. Yeah, 51, 76, 66, 89 will not finish. Yeah, it's too too late. Can't do it. No, with, 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 with that, we would probably be literally at lap 40 and they would take the checkers. So we're not going to do that. Yeah. Bradley Ream, what happened to Bradley Ream? He, he's a little slow. I think he lost momentum. And that one of those tunnel turn moves probably bit him in the butt, as you can see some pack separation. Also, we'll take a look at that, Rick, after we, just, we have to recross the finish line. And it looks like uh, Reggie going to try to turn one here. We have, uh, we cannot have another yellow if the car wrecks. That's, that's just not good for them, because uh, we're not going to throw a yellow for that. No, unless it, unless cool. they go around the lap and it's a hazard, but this track's big enough, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Unless we get a gaming freak type accident, then we have to throw it. Um, yeah. So it's, Unless it's on the last lap, I won't throw it on the last lap because they just race the yellow anyway. Right, right, right. But right now, it's still Joy Payne. She's coming to two to go. What a master class. Paying the brush, whatever you want to say. Can Joy Payne's hanging off the two to go? Can Eli the Wolf generate anything? Or is Daniel Paulus trying to make a late run for second at this point? Here we go. Two to go. Wolf's going to start sniffing it a little bit. He's sniffing. He's sniffing. You can see, though, I think the 215 is gone. It's probably only 210, almost 209. About 209. We lost about six miles per hour with the tire fall off being a second now. I just don't think anyone's got anything. Yeah, it's it's going to get style. And these four cars up here are trying real hard, but everyone's just they're starting to run low on those fuel, fuel tanks. I think they'll make it, but uh, and fuel tires, they're really uh, worn out. Well, and there's not a lot left you can do. I think that might be all she wrote, Zach, because Paul has just lost a heck of a lot of momentum, and he just lost it again. Eli the Wolf's going to go a little higher, try to get clean air in the nose, but he wasn't high enough. Joy Payne's coming to the white flag, looking for two in a row with the Crown Jewel races. I'll have Zach take a one-two coverage, and I'll finish at home. Yeah, it looks like 77 Joy Payne's may be able to go back-to-back -back here. Eli, he's quick, just these tires are so worn. He might have something here. But he's got to make the right move, and he's got to make it count. And, again, there's not a lot these guys can do, but we'll see with this last lap here. I think, again, I think everyone's good on fuel. Everyone should make it to the line, but it uh, looks like Joy Paints may go back to back here. Joy Paints coming into the tunnel turn. We're going to paint the canvas for a second time. Eli the Wolf looks a little higher. Can't do it. Joy Paints, what a master class. Took the lead on a second restart of the race after the second cost from Reggie Fogelman and has now looked back. Paul is looking one last time in the three. No. Is Joy Payne's going to block that move? Absolutely. Joy Payne's coming off the final turn. Is going to win here at Pocono for the York Peppermint Patties 200. What a great job by Joy Payne's. Back to back. Crown Jewel events. Two different schemes. And we did not have Bird have a, a play a factor there. What can you say, Bird, Zach, I, about uh, Joy Payne's? So just absolute master class today. Nothing else to say, really. Yeah, she, she really executed really well. Not much else to say. She... She was given, uh, again, started third both races, finished first in both of them. Bad pit call by the nine car. Definitely put this play into, put this position into play. Had a really great restart in that last restart. And from that point on, she it was her race to lose, uh, for I guess, because he's got they just could not figure out how to get around. She was just too good on pace to let anything different happen. And a big day for Joy Paints and Points. Evan H. had a rough one. So did Caso. He did not have his best run. Let's look at that wreck real quick before we sign off here. This was in turn one. I'm not sure he caused it. Four wide it. up ahead. It looks like four wide up ahead. Okay. Yep. Uh, I think it's 48. It could be wrong. Yep. Uh, in front of that, 51. Yeah, not a weeb. No, it's 51. A Yoiko got tagged. Yoiko... See what Kim does better, Justice. Yeah, that's uh, that's typical. Oh wow! Looks like uh, third and Alexa Gaming pressed the issue for sure. Went four wide into a corner for twenty something. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Drummer chick, I save it. What a good save. And oh. I know where to go for Gunther, Brad, or Roach. Yeah, it's just that's just uh that's just late race racing, man. Nothing you can do and we couldn't throw the caution, like I said, due to being at the end of the race, we don't want to take a chance and the under yellow. Go slowing or so there was nowhere so Yoiko came down into Brad. And Brad got into Gunther, nowhere for Roach to go. Ooh man, I think I think Dark Rain was able to avoid that for the most part. So was everyone else, but it was just those guys involved. But to break for them, most of them did not finish the race. Whereas I think the highest finisher that I think the only guy that finished the race on an pace was Bird. So he will definitely, despite not having a great race today, will come out okay after that. Right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, you're ready to close this broadcast. Uh, yeah, I want to say really good racing, though. Even though it wasn't what we expected for the fans, good racing in terms of just how to play line strategy, good rapport with the spotter. But once again, Zach, it's Joy Paints going back-to-back -back here at Pocono. Crown Jewel events. Zach gave his final thoughts. Just typical, great master class. Can't really complain. Next race will be the NCCRS at Pocono. We're going to do the double here, the Pocono double. See who can get it done in the second race of that series. For the CCS... I believe the next race is Zach. What is the next race? I believe I want to say uh, it's Auto Club Honest T two fifty. It is Auto Club, yes. We'll see you at Auto Club for the Honest two Honest T two fifty for Zach for myself. And even though Reem couldn't be here, thank you Reem for the pre race uh, coverage. We're signing off. We'll see you at Auto Club in two weeks. <laughs>